Here's what we're going to talk about. A lot of people out there, in my opinion right now, starting to bring on more risk than they probably should be. So why are most investors that started 10 years ago not here today? And why are most active investors in today's market not going to be investing in 10 years? How many of you have seen a lot of people come and go? Those of you who've been in the industry for a while? Homeboy shows up, he's got all the money in the world, he's ready to kill this thing, pop, 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 three, five years ago. Oh, where'd he go? Oh, where'd he go? Oh, where'd they go? I refer to the, the reasons, the, the, the answers to these questions and what I refer to is the double down invincible effect, the no hamburger, french fry and soda, and the general lack of consistent identity. The double down invincible effect. If you're just starting this business, maybe two, been in this year, in this two years, one year, three years, couple years, well, guess what? I just knocked that condo out of the park. We nailed that. So guess what I'm ready for? Something a little bigger, something a little better. Something with some real meat to it. Also, I jump into that little single family home out there in West Valley. And man, we nailed that one too. And maybe we did that once or twice. Well, heaven's sakes, I'm ready for something a little bigger. So let's get something a little bigger. You know what? All those guys over there, the real smart guys, the designer types, where are they at? They're in Harvard, Yale. A real value add type remodel. The real HGTV bullcrap crap. <laughs> so they go over there and do this HGTV thing and maybe they do one or two of those. And then they start going into, hit me on the next slide. Oh, guess what? All of a sudden, I'm legit, man. I've been in this business for now a year. <laughs> I'm a developer. I got my paper in lots, right? And so what happens is, is we just start to double down. We double down into more and more and more and the leverage follows and the cash flow starts to be what I refer to as lumpy, very lumpy. We got this big deal, but it took us two years to get it done and we're starving in the interim, right? So what I'm just gonna, and again, I don't wanna take any of the wind out of anybody's sails because I'm sure if you guys are out there doing some development deals, you guys know what you're doing, right? Like you've partnered with people that are doing it, you've mitigated your risk and you're good to go. But what I've seen is I've seen a lot of this doubling down going in. Cause this ego starts happening we gotta get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, right? And I keep coming back to this stupid wrestling thing, but if you got a couple really good moves, and you just hit that move and bam, I'm gonna hit that again. Worked on the last guy, I'm gonna hit it again. So what we wanna do is get in and, and duplicate. Get in and duplicate, get to the point where we're duplicating. So again, every time I teach this, people are like, well, Mike, like, uh, I wanna make more money. I wanna, I wanna go bigger. Cool, every once in a while, get in there, hit that shot, hit this shot, boom, 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 next. Okay, we're pulling this other one, right? But we've gotta get that scale. And we've got to get in there and find duplication within that, okay? So this double down effect, how many of you guys, by, by the way, kind of been sucked into it a little bit? I get sucked into it all the time, right? So I'll think about that. Just be careful about the leverage and the time frames and all that kind of stuff that go on. Hit me on the next slide. I personally, I love in and out Grew up in Southern California, I love in and out okay? You walk into in and out right? And I'm saying that most people aren't around because they don't have the hamburger, french fry, or soda. They don't have like the one, two, three punch, right? Hamburgers, what are they going for? According to our thing, double, double, what a 275, 325 right in there. And then you got your french fries at a buck 85. This might be an old slide, I don't know, or pricing. But what they've got is a couple different little price points of stuff. How come all of a sudden in the real estate world, we think that we can just do kind of like, one thing, and that's the price point that we hit at, and boom, boom, boom. How come we can't have a couple? How come we can't have a little bit of, yeah, some basic little retail stuff that we're doing? How come we can't have this a little bit of wholesale stuff that we're doing to kind of keep the wheels kind of greased a little bit, kind of for the cash flow? How many of you guys, like, sometimes you're in this, you're like, oh, man, like, my, my closest money is 45, 60 days out. How am I going to get around this Monopoly board? Dang, right? We gotta have a couple little things in that, in that 
in, in that price point. You know what I'm saying? A couple of wholesales, three to five, 10 grand, hit those. Okay, we got a couple little retail stuff happening. That's good. Okay, got a couple little rentals happening. That's good. On the, so we hit it just a couple of different ways. The biggest problem I see these guys, they're not around anymore is because all they do is try to make not even double doubles, they try to go quad. They, they try to hit that double double quad animal style and the next thing you know, they got about five to seven to 10 of those big honkers, big value add remodel type stuff. Next thing they know, they're going, honey, we're out of cash. So I want you thinking hamburger, french fry, little soda, a couple of different price points to help to get yourself around that monopoly board. Next slide. And then the other thing is just general lack of consistency and identity. Like you need to start to identify, who, this is who I am, this is what I do, this is what I offer, this is what I'm good at, this is what I suck at, right? You need to start to identify that, and I hate to say this because it's gonna be a little bit counterintuitive, because you're like, I wanna make as much money as I possibly can, so I gotta have lots of opportunity, right? So I'm gonna do a little bit of this, do a little bit of that, I'm gonna head over here and do some of this, well, guess what happens? All of a sudden, we're not doing anything very well and we've lost kind of our focus. Trust me when I tell you this, the more niche you can get, the more money and the faster money will come. When I talk about niche, here's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about like my brothers right here. They're like the best at it right now in this valley that I know of. These guys are doing one little deal right here. Guess what? And then guess what? The next house they do, oh, it's three houses down and then it's in the backyard of that other house and then it's over here like this and all of a sudden it's like chick, 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 and they got really niche well who has competitive advantage in that marketplace they do got massive competitive advantage right there in that niche so the more niche you can get and i i, I say like 15 you know i i told people uh, 15, 20 minutes from where I live is where I do my flipping transactional business. If I get a deal that's out in Ogden, down in Payson, I think that'd be a phenomenal deal for somebody else to do. Maybe do a wholesale deal or something like that, but I get very, very niche in my specific area of work.